Well, first of all, Happy New Year to all you lectionary followers, because as we uh, arrive at Advent Sunday, we are, of course, at the first Sunday of a new year and a new round of readings, and that means a new gospel. And so from Matthew's gospel, we now move to Mark. We don't start at the beginning. We start in chapter 13, but there is a, a sense of significance about this point in the gospel. Uh, it is very much a conclusion of the, the, the ministry of Jesus uh, before we hear the announcement that the plot to kill Jesus has been uh, put into place and the passion story is about to unfold. Chapter 13 is uh, unfamiliar territory uh, in, in many ways, very different from the rest of Mark's gospel. Gone are the short pithy sayings of Jesus. And now we are in this territory of cosmic struggle and end of the world language. So let's listen. Mark 13, starting at verse 24. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the thick tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you will know that he is here, near, at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Well, that's a bewildering passage, but I want to focus on the last few verses on that little parable that Jesus tells of a man going on a journey. And the very final words, just two words that to me ring out loud and clear, keep awake. And as there is a, a sense of conclusion to a story here, I also want to draw a parallel with how the story began in Mark. The story that began with four, uh, four men, two sets of brothers who first hear the call of Jesus, Peter, Andrew, James and John. Uh, we didn't hear it in, in our, we, we didn't hear quite enough of chapter 13, but had we done so, we'd know exactly the four brothers are listening uh, to this particular passage from Jesus. And that story began with, again, a very clear call from Jesus to the disciples in two simple words, and those words were, follow me. So here's a story that begins, follow me, and ends, keep awake. There's another rather delicious little um, mirror also, because you will recall, particularly for James and John, they hear the call of Jesus, and what do they do? They leave 
their nets in the boat with their father and the hired servants, and they leave and follow Jesus. As far as we know, at this point, they have never returned. And so the disciples who began as the men who go on a journey, leaving the servants to their work. So now Jesus tells a parable about a man who goes on a journey, leaves home and puts his slave in charge and commands the doorkeeper to keep watch. And so suddenly the disciples have changed roles and they are the ones not on the journey, but back home watching and waiting. So I think the first thing to note is the contrast, that, that, that we've come to a, a very different place now. The instruction, follow me, is very much an active instruction to actually walk with Jesus, to go to the places that he goes to, to be with the people that he is with. The instruction to keep awake, certainly at first hearing, sounds like a much more passive role. And maybe that in itself says something about our own experience of discipleship, which sometimes is about being very active, about actually going out there into the world to do the things we feel Christ is calling us to, to speak to the people we feel our discipleship is calling us to speak to, to have those conversations of faith, uh, to be builders up of the kingdom of God in our own place. Particularly there are times when our discipleship might be much more, at least on the outward uh, service anyway, more passive, where it is much more about reflection, about prayer, about watching and waiting and, and, and trying to discern where God's call might be to us in the world in which we live. And maybe we can observe at the point at chapter 13 for the disciples that they are coming very close to the end of the road uh, along which they will be able to follow Jesus. A little bit earlier, full of enthusiasm, the disciples have been asking for the best places in this uh, imminent kingdom of God. And Jesus challenges them with the words, and can you drink the cup that I am going to drink? And there will come a point very soon in this story when the honest answer that has to be no. There is a point beyond which the disciples do not go. They can no longer follow. And it's a journey that only Jesus can make. He will make it on their behalf and indeed on all of our behalf, that journey to the cross. But it's a journey that Jesus makes because only he can. Maybe there are times in our discipleship when we need that humble acknowledgement that we have gone as far as we can and we need to put all of our trust and all of our faith into the way in which God can take us beyond the place we can take ourselves, from active to passive. But although we have those two contrasts, the beginning of the gospel, follow me, the end of the gospel, keep watch, there is a strong common theme that both of those calls from Jesus require utter and complete commitments and utter and complete involvement of our whole selves. That's obvious when Jesus says, follow me. There are no half measures. You leave your nets and you come. But I think the same can be said of the instruction to keep awake. It's not keeping half an eye on things. It's not um, just being ready to stir from sleep if we were absolutely uh, compelled to do so. That watchfulness, I think, that Jesus calls is an utter and complete uh, watchfulness that requires our razor sharp focus, even in our times of reflection and prayer and acknowledging that we have gone as far as we can go, our razor sharp concentration on our discipleship of Jesus Christ. At this time of Advent, and when actually also in, in our time of, of, of uh, COVID restrictions, we may feel um, quite unable to do many of the things that we would otherwise feel called to do in our Christian discipleship. Advent traditionally a time of watching and waiting. How do we hear the call of Jesus to make that watching and waiting quite as intense, 
quite as wholehearted as was that call to follow me.